and welcome to this Monday edition of Focal Point AFR Talk. Brian Fisher is my name, congenial, convivial, and amiable. As always, great to have you in the conversation. We're going to break down the Michael Sam draft day uh, debacle for you in detail. We'll start diving into that at a quarter hour in the very next segment. Uh, segment so stick around for that. Also, heads up tomorrow, we're going to have the Benham Brothers on tomorrow afternoon at 1.30 Central. Uh, these are the two brothers that got bounced off the HGTV network because, well, they're Christians and because they actually have the temerity and the audacity to believe what the Bible teaches about human sexuality and about marriage. And for that, they got bounced. You talk about prejudice. You talk about discrimination. You talk about intolerance. You talk about hate, if you want to use that term. They're the ones on the receiving end of that. We'll have them on as our guest tomorrow at 1.30, and we'll take some time for phone calls. So plan ahead, be with us, and call in with your questions or comments for uh, the Benham Brothers. That is tomorrow afternoon. Now, before we jump into all of the all of that we want to get to today, I want to share some thoughts with you from the Scriptures as we begin our uh, program today. You know, one of the questions that comes up, <clears throat> now, I'm not going to give an exhaustive answer to this question because we don't have time, obviously, to do that. But, you know, we had a tornado come through uh, to, uh, Tupelo here about two weeks ago. And it's devastating. I mean, I drove through there. My wife and I have, been, have driven through some of the areas. I mean, it is amazing to me the power of, the, of wind, the power of the tornado, the size of the trees that were uprooted and cut in half, and the damage that was done to multiple-story structures like hotels and single-story structures like restaurants just virtually leveled to the ground, churches basically decapitated the entire top half of church buildings, uh, removed and stripped and lying in rubble and ruins, enormous power. And w whatever else you look around, you see nature's not functioning like we want it to. And I do not believe that nature is functioning like it should. And so the question is, what's happened? This, these tornadoes that we see, is this God doing this? Is this Satan doing this? What is the explanation for why you have so many natural catastrophes. And I think the answer is very, very simple. According to Romans 8, nature has fallen because man has fallen. When man sinned, when man sinned, nature, creation, the earth, the environment fell with him. So you want to answer, uh, you, you want a straightforward, um, concise answer to the question of why natural disasters happen they happen because man sinned. Now, I'm not saying every natural disaster can be directly attributable to one particular sin or a group of sins or anything like that. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that the reason that nature does not function like it was intended to function is because of the fall of man. When man fell into sin, he took creation, he took nature, he took the environment right down with him. This is what Paul says in Romans chapter 8. Uh, he says a beautiful thing to begin with, first of all. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed in us or to us. So we all go through suffering right now. It's painful. It is no fun. You might be going through it. You may have somebody you love, your immediate family, extended family, and, I mean, they are, are suffering. It's a, it, it, What they're going through is incredibly painful. You suffer with them. And what Paul says, look, it is painful. He doesn't minimize it. He doesn't try to soft pedal. He says, look, these are sufferings. But I want you to know that what is coming is far better than what you're experiencing right now. You can't even compare the suffering you're experiencing now with what it will produce, not only in this age, but in the age to come. And then he says this. Listen to this, verse 19. For the creation itself waits eagerly, longing for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. A couple of things to observe there. He says, look, creation was subjected to futility because of the sin of man. When man fell, creation fell right along with it. And creation right now is groaning. 
I mean, you've got earthquakes, you have seismic upheavals, you have tsunamis, you have volcanoes. This is the creation itself groaning, and what it is groaning about or groaning in anticipation of is the day when creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. So the future of the creation is tied up with the future of the children of God. When we are redeemed, when we are elevated, when we get our new bodies, creation will be made new. And all of the environmental disasters, all of the natural disasters will be but a distant memory because creation itself will be redeemed when man is redeemed. So the point is that the, the future of the environment is tied up with the future of the children of God. It's not connected to the Sierra Club. It's not connected to Greenpeace. Whatever future for redemption and healing and wholeness the created order itself has, it is tied up with you and me. It's tied into our future. The children of God hold the secret to the redemption of the created order. And that's something that we groan for, we yearn for, we are longing for the redemption of our bodies, as does the entire created order. Now, the rest of Romans chapter 8 got some great stuff. Maybe we'll take some time over the next couple of days to work through some of the content here. Great statement in here about the Spirit helping us when we do not know how to pray. You and I often do not know what we ought to pray for. We do not know how we ought to pray. We know we need to pray. We know we want to pray. We don't know We don't know what to ask for. We don't even know how to pray. But the great promise of the Scriptures is that the Spirit will intercede for us in those times with groans that words cannot express. We can't even put into words. Maybe all we can do is sort of groan. It just comes from a deep place within us. The Holy Spirit is able to take the, that internal agitation and turn that into a prayer that will touch the heart of God. Well, let's go to prayer. Heavenly Father, I pray for myself and my family, the listening audience of Focal Point and AFR Talk, President Obama, and all of our elected officials, every man, woman, and child in this land. And I pray by the work of your Holy Spirit and by the renewal that you bring and the revival that you bring to our land, that all of us will consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will one day be revealed in us. May we all look forward with eager anticipation to that day when we will be revealed as your sons and when creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the glorious freedom of the children of God. Father, I know that in many ways we, even though we have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait for our adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. May we be grateful for this hope and remember that it was for this hope we have been saved. May we wait patiently for this hope to be realized. We confess that we often do not know what we ought to pray for or how we ought to pray, and so I ask that your Spirit will help us all in our weakness. May your Spirit intercede for us with groans that words cannot express. I pray that your Spirit will intercede for us in accordance with your will and lead us to pray according to your will. May we take comfort in knowing that you who search our hearts also know the mind of the Spirit. Amen.